Hello, everyone. I'm Kamran. Hey, and I'm Billy. Today, we're excited to announce the launch of our new series, The Malazan Brotherhood. What is The Malazan Brotherhood, you may ask? Well, it's a book club of sorts. If you've listened to our excruciating detail series, you have an idea of what to expect by now. We'll be digging deep into the greatest fantasy story ever written, The Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. As a listener, I wouldn't consider this a book review. Understand that we are fanboys. We wouldn't commit this much of our lives to creating this podcast otherwise. I'm not going to debate anyone's opinion on whether <laughs> they think other series are better than this one. Go into this series knowing that I love this series and that I am biased towards this series. And on this, Comron and I agree wholeheartedly. He is extremely biased, as am I. <laughs> as am I. <laughs> So why are we doing this? Well, believe it or not, everything we've done until now has just been practice leading up to this moment. When Billy and I decided to create a podcast together, I proposed we discuss this series. During preparation, we quickly realized that we had no experience with podcasting and decided to get some reps in so we could do the series justice. This episode is intended to give you a little bit of background and into what the series means to us. So feel free to jump to episode one if you want to get right into it. I'd like to spend a moment to discuss how this idea came about. Let's start with how I was introduced to the series. My friend Ryan recommended the series to me after we read through the Game of Thrones books that were available at the time. This was around 2010. Of note, Ryan told me that the brutality in the Malazan Book of the Fallen made the mountain killing the Viper look tame in comparison from Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, okay. Also... The series was actually complete, which was a big selling point, because yeah. even today, <laughs> Game of Thrones is still not complete. This is a definite plus, in my I opinion. I think Wheel of Time is also not done, correct? I have never read any of those books, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it well, is That not might be a criticism of my statement that this is the best fantasy series ever, because people that have read it. that are probably going to be like, well, you haven't read this. So I've, I've know, read but, three or four yeah. into it. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Of those. Do you, uh, dude, Malazan, do you agree with me that Malazan is okay, the greatest fantasy series okay. ever for read? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I stand right. by that statement. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I don't need to read it then. <laughs> uh, so, shortly after I started reading the Malazan series, I moved from Houston to Dallas, and I met Billy when I transferred to his Fry's Electronics location. Now, I was always a, a huge fan of fantasy literature, particularly horror, the horror genre. Now, Comron and I, after we had become acquaintances, started talking about things we liked. Of course, reading was a big mutual interest, and we shared an extremely profound love and respect for Frank Herbert's Dune and his original series. Yeah. Just on a side note, <laughs> I love Dune so much that my three boys are named after characters from that series. And for me to say that I love the Malazan series more is a big statement. Yes. Just throwing that out there. Yes. Well, I, I don't know if I love it more. It's just Dune is, we'll consider it science fantasy. I do love the Malazan books more. I do. Uh, Dune I do. As, that's Dune as a whole series. Yes. Because once Frank Herbert stopped writing Dune, the last two books in the core series kind of lost their luster for me because he his voice wasn't there. Yes. And a lot of the strength of his series was his writing. Yes. And yet yeah, Dune... The book itself, the oh. first one, is legendary, Dude. right? Individually, it, it is one of the best books ever written. I think it but is. But you take the whole series, yeah. and well, the Malazan books wins hands down. Malazan is one giant, ep oh my word, thank you yeah. still. <laughs> yeah. As I was reading through the Malazan series, I was telling my friends Billy and Scott about it at work. Billy began reading it, and then at work, we would discuss what was happening in the books. We really bonded over these discussions and a real beautiful friendship formed. Now, after reading this the series the first time, nothing else seemed to hold up anymore. We'd get the itch to reread the series every couple of years. Uh, this will be the fourth read through for both of us. I have listened yeah. to the audiobooks three times apart from the actual read throughs. And I think you have wow. too. Listen to, to the uh, a couple, I think two, two on the. On the audio, on the listening. So, yeah. and so, and I've heard that people have reread this as much as seventeen, easily up to fifteen, uh, up to twenty to seventy times. Seven T. Wow. So it was seven zero. Yeah, it's it's a big reread. It's it, that's that to me is a huge bonus because I love to reread and to have a book that is this deep brings me back. Did you just say somebody has reread this seventy times? I think seventy times. 
Wow. That, yeah. I mean, it's it's like 1.2 million words or something. Yeah. Yeah. How long? I mean, it takes me like it's a, year. a year to read it. <laughs> it's a year read. Yeah. So it's well. So they must get they must plow through it real quickly or audio book it. A lot of people audio books at one and a half speed. I, I do. I'm a fast listener. Hmm. I don't get the same out of it when it's the audio book. I have to read okay. it. I do. I'm yeah, one of those that th does. That's my personal thing. I have a bonus. I, I do. I have a bonus okay. on that. So I'm real fortunate. I moved back to Houston from Dallas in 2013. Billy and I kept in touch over the years, and we'd always talk about the Malazan books on the phone. This series, it just really grabs a hold yeah. of you. You know, the, the way Steven Erickson writes these characters, you really fall in love with them. Yeah. And he takes them from you brutally. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just a testament to how good they were in the first place. And I, and I think one of the things that really is critical about the way he writes characters is he builds the world first because he's he has a PhD in anthropology and a PhD in archaeology. Yes. So his understanding of human development really leads him to create just such a, a beautiful world. And yes. the peoples that inhabit the world, it, like he writes the terrain, then the people that would live there. Yeah. And it's just, it's incredible. It's amazing, dude. It's, I, and I have never read a series that has made me cry. I mean, I have had tears flowing and sometimes it's just a choked up, but I've never read anything in this genre that is this powerful. And just today, looking at a Reddit thread, another guy was mentioning crying too. Amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. I believe this to be the finest. I mean, I do believe this to be the finest work in fantasy in existence. So funny, funny story there. I used to work offshore mm -hmm. in the oil and gas right. industry and you bunk up in rooms with like four people. Okay. okay. And everybody works kind of opposite shifts. So sometimes you'll be sleeping in there. Uh, there'll be like two people in the room with you. So like it's pitch black in there and I'm reading on my Kindle and it was dust of dreams. Oh. It, like you were just talking about. And there's this one scene in there, something happens and I, I had to bite my hand because I was like about to let out like a, an the audible sob. like sob. I don't know what freaking grown what. man. About, it was what. hilarious, uh, but yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that, oh, that's the word. kind of effect it'll have on you. And now, now another thing, real quick, is that a lot of people apparently it scares people because the the number of characters in this series. Please do not let that intimidate you or scare you. Embrace that. Embrace the difference. Don't yes. worry. You don't. It's okay if you don't remember from A to B that you may have met this guy before. It's okay. Trust me. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. That's why we are going to guide you through this entire process. Yeah. So if it seems intimidating, this is going to be kind of like a book club where if you've listened to any of our excruciating details, it's going to be very similar format. We're not going to read every word out of the books. Though. Yes. Uh, we're we're going to summarize this. It's not going to be like the dialogue from the TV shows that we've covered. We're going to summarize it, but we're going to keep all the characters straight. And we're going to give a little bit additional insight into the way the world works and the way systems work together, like the magic and maybe cover some vocabulary stuff. Yeah. And that should help kind of ease you along. Yes. And we, cause we want you to have the same joy and love that we have for this. Yeah. We really want to spread the word. Yeah. Uh, more people need to read this series. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't have the recognition it deserves. All right. So I thought it would be a good idea for us to kind of mention some of the epic fantasy series or just epic series of books that we've read mm -hmm. just to give a little context when we say this is our favorite. So I read Dune yes. and The Gunslinger. Yes, I love the I love both of those very much. Mm -hmm. I've read Game of Thrones I have, to a point. I have not, and I, I, I'm sorry. I'm I, I am as a Don't fantasy. Don't apologize. It's okay. it's hard. Well, it's, as as a fantasy reader, I I am all I tend like I say I tend to lean heavy on on f a horror more so than fantasy mm -hmm. fantasy. And uh, when I do, it's I'm more of a tra uh, traditionalist, and I have a tendency to re reread and. That's why I was so happy about this mm -hmm. because to me, one of the ones that I brought, I think I got you to read one of them was the Stephen Donaldson's um, Thomas Covenant trilogy. Yeah. I read um, the first one. See, yeah. I read that as a, that came out 
in the seventies and I read that I would have probably been 13 or 14 and it was, it was some really adult topics in that one. And it's such a darker, mm-hmm. meaner fantasy and, and so non-derivative because the problem you have with fantasy as so many people are aware of is it's always usually leans so heavily on Lord of the Rings systems just straight up. And uh, mm. I've read a little of Wheel of Time, like I said, three or four of those books. And I enjoyed it, but they weren't, they didn't catch me like the Malaz. I don't know why, I don't know what it is about Erickson. And, and I wish I could pass this to people, how it's it's so unique. It, it's so deep. <laughs> and I don't want to, yeah. fr- I don't do this to frighten you. It's like, no, I, 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 it's it's to encourage you because it's, I don't know, I, I really, it's so amazing. <laughs> You because you mm. turn you turn me on to the Black Company. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, the Black Company. We both read that. Yeah. What's the system uh, of the world? That's uh, Neil Stevenson's. Oh. It's a historical fiction series, but it's, that, it's just as long as the okay. Malazan books. Oh, is that that Shafto? That yeah, that? yeah, Jack Sha- <laughs> Halfcock Shafto. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. Well, he's one of the characters. Okay. Daniel Waterhouse. He meets a bunch of historical figures. You know, in the Sir Isaac Newton era. Okay. It's a really interesting, fun series. What about when when you were when you were young? Was there anything like kind of that that you were allowed to read that tickled you? That was unusual. Well, I'll tell you this: I started reading Stephen King when I was in the fifth grade. Wow! I was reading The Stand, the extended version, in the sixth grade. Okay, I had that capacity, but my parents wouldn't have let me buy King. Yeah, my mom let me read some crazy stuff like Dean Koontz. Some of the <laughs> oh, some great, of those dude. books. See, my mother. Yeah, but me, that's she, what I was reading. See, I read. Uh, my parents did not discourage my love of fantasy. They let me read Michael Moorcock and Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs okay. did Tarzan, but he also did the John Carter of Mars series. Okay, very pulpy, but very impactful on me. It's very hack and slash, and it's what I would call science fantasy. There is a you know carter is almost super there's a max it's on that disney plus i think john carter of mars you ought to watch that with your kids it's pretty cool man he's superhuman on it's like it's a lower gravity world so he goes you know he somehow gets transported to mars and is like superhuman i remember that seeming to be a pretty epic flop for disney yeah, it right? was. It was like a 200 million dollar budget it or was, something and didn't make I, I, I loved it because of the story and okay. it's, it also had some, uh-huh. the, the guy that i like oh my goodness i can't remember his name right now it's somebody else you the like actor? But yes cantos can it's the guy that plays cantos can in that movie taylor kitsch no it's that no, not kitsch the main the, guy not the main guy it was this like this okay it, it was the third guy down he's he's the guy that's in altered carbon james purifoy Oh, uh, James Purifoy. Okay, yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so I love, right. I love Purifoy. I don't know why I like yeah. that guy so much, but I do. And he's he's Cantos Can. He's really likable. He's a really likable fella in that. And he's one of my. He's okay. a good, he's a great character in that series. But um, but the Michael Moorcock stuff. And but and my parents, of course, let me read Tolkien. And because uh, I was like you, mm. I was I was a high reading person. I was reading books without pictures in kindergarten. And my friends never mm-hmm. read. And I was the only person in my friends that read for fun until I got to high school. And mm-hmm. was, so I had a hard time finding stuff. And, my, my, and like I said, my mother didn't discourage me. She let me read Hitchhiker's Guide. If she didn't know what it was about, she wouldn't have let me read Hitchhiker's Guide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, those yeah. Were and all, then we those both read Lord really of the magical. Rings. Yeah. Super deep. Now, that, Lord of the Rings is, man, is that, that did, you, did you love it? It's gorgeous no. to me. You didn't love it? Okay. <laughs> I I wonder if age has something to do with it too. Well, I read it after the first Lord of the Rings movie came out. Oh, see, I read by this by Peter Jackson. See, I read it when I was like about ten. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, Whoa. the Tom Bumble door, Bumble Dumb, whatever. You can always hold that skip whole past. sequence. Yes. You could throw you that. I don't all... skip stuff in books, but the Tom Bombadil, yeah, yeah, that that kind of threw me off. Yeah, Bombadil, yeah, whatever. Yeah, all Bumbledore. the musical, the musical interludes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, the music can't stand singing in books. Can't stand it. I get it. There is some of that in the Malazan books, but I can I can get over it. Yeah, dude, it's Erickson. It, but, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what there is about Erickson and why he's forgiven, because Erickson presents <laughs> a world and people that are actually really believable. His yes. his fantasy characters are the most believable characters I've ever met. Yeah. I mean, they they just the, especially the 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 Marines. Yes, all of my favorite characters. Yeah, are Marines. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's fast forward to February of 2022. Billy and I are texting each other back and forth. 
I had been wanting to do a podcast for a long time, but couldn't figure out what topic I could discuss endlessly. Coincidentally, I was also in my first book club at work. When Billy and I were texting each other, we both mentioned we were getting the itch to read the series again, and the light bulb went off. And that, is that when I had asked you what series, what books was your favorite the series? Yeah, I think it was in the same conversation. Okay. Because you mentioned Dead House Gates, which yes is amazing, and mine was Garden of the Moon due yes. to my being in the introduction to the universe. But I did mm -hmm. find a place in Canada that had autographed copies, and I'd call them. And man, if y'all, if you ever need some books, call Monroe's Books in Canada. It's very easy to find the people. I wish I am so sorry I can't remember the young lady who helped me, but she was so sweet. I'd call to ask for autographed copies, and she asked me if I wanted them personally inscribed, and I about fainted, dude. So she said that Steven Erickson came in about once a month to autograph these things and to inscribe them. And so I got them personally inscribed and then that, then the, I think the rest is history. Huh? <laughs> yeah, basically I, I pitched the idea to you. Right. And it, then <laughs> I started a long text, dude, it was huge too. It was at least a paragraph saying, no, this was not in fact what I meant, <laughs> but I raised <laughs> it and said, yes, that is what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I did receive that autograph copy. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. It really seeing his handwriting on that page, it, it was just like wow. Yeah, this is this like extra real. Maybe one day I'll be able to shake his hand. That'd I, be awesome. I'm, that's what I think. That's part of mine and your goal is to actually meet him. Okay. Yeah, he seems person, really cool. He seems so, super chill. Dude. Yeah, yeah, that'd be so cool. Oh yeah. All right. So now that brings us to present day. I have tried to get countless people to read this series. And most people see the list of characters and the length of the series, and they're like, eh, they, they can't do it. It's just too overwhelming. Dude, and kind of like that. we're mentioning earlier, yeah. we're going to make it accessible. Yeah. 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 Because I'm so happy. I mean, dude, that, when I first saw that list, I too kind of felt that way. But then it was like, just you just ignore it and you go to page one. And and, 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 and once you get into Erickson's writing, you'll understand it. From page one, you'll, word one, yeah, there's something about Erickson's writing. It catches you. It's infectious. Yeah. And then as we're covering, we'll be layering our signature commentary and diversions on top of it. <laughs> yes. Just look at our hundred hours of content. <laughs> Oh <laughs> and the Lord. excruciating details for the boys. Is that how long that As is? an example of how, no, I, I'm exaggerating. Uh, you know, we've done like 24 episodes, two and a half to three hours. Yeah, so it's got to at least be 70 to 80 hours. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay. Okay. Well, that about covers it. Yeah, so man. I hope everyone joins us on this journey. Join us, man. These books deserve a much larger audience. And we want to do our part to spread the word. So jump in over to episode one and let's get started. Don't be scared of the large characters. It's awesome. You'll love them. Yes. Join us. You're going to love these characters. Yeah, they're fantastic. All right. See, we'll see you, you there. there. We thank you all for joining us today. Again, we'd really like to thank you for taking the time to be with us. And we've had a really great time talking about the topic today. If you would like to support our show, you can find us at horsefrogproductions.com, where you can find our Patreon link. Depending on the platform you're listening from, it may also be in the episode description. And if you'd like to contact us uh, through email, it's at contact at horsefrogproductions.com.